Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the resort garden and see how it's doing. If this is the first time that you're visiting, this is the part of the property where we don't get too much sun so it can be challenging to grow certain types of crops like the corn there. The, those plants are extras so we're just going to see how they're going to do this year in this area. The other par part of this is that this is the part of the property where we try to practice permaculture in a more pure level and by that we try to have this be as closed loop as possible meaning we try to use material and soil amendment from our property versus going to the store and getting them like for example using wood from our trees to create terrace material on top of everything that's growing or underneath everything that's growing is California clay and clay soil is very difficult to grow um, things on so we'll have to build soil and we're doing that by composting and also with the manure from our pets we have a pet rabbit and now we have pet ducks and we have manure that we're putting into this area to give it more nutrients so that the plants can grow this is also a good uh, laboratory place play space and an, a place where we can see how permaculture behaves in an arid environment like Southern California. So we can see the pros and cons of permaculture um, for ourselves and share that with you. One of the things about California, as I just mentioned, is that we are arid, so things happen a lot slower than other places where there's a lot of moisture and warmth. So it, this has been, um, a few years in the process, three at least. And the good thing about permaculture is that it can be hands off so you can you can have very minimal effort to to get things going. So if you this is like a back burner item. If you're busy elsewhere in the garden you can use permaculture and kind of stay hands off and still over time have something to work with. So once this thing gets going, it should be very little hands on and it should just kind of fire on all cylinders so um, but you're probably here to see how it's doing and I'm going getting too long in that part of the talk so we'll take a look at what's growing here we have bamboo and recently transplanted a bitter melon we have an artichoke plant that's here it's the Violet de Provence variety there's garlic chive that we're growing. Uh, we have dragon fruit along the fence. This is a knobby squash, the Thai Cobb Kang, and it's got this really dark green squash that it makes. We have another knobby one that's a red curry that we'll look at in a second. Some lemongrass. This is our Fuji apple. This tree's been growing here for a while, and once again, with the lack of light, it doesn't grow as quickly. Uh, I went and cut it down because I didn't like the shape of it so hopefully it'll start growing more um, side shoots and for us. Some Zebrun shallot. A lot of people try to grow this one and a lot of people end up with shallots that don't look, look like the picture but rather um, long and slender like this. So that's something that we're working on. I think they need to be grown more like garlic because we've gotten some Zeroon shallots that look more like Zeroon shallots in the illustration. We have wild zatar that's going wild with blossoms and seeds. So uh, we're going to collect the seeds and start new plants. Same with the marijuana. And we have a sunflower that's growing here. It's going to seed now. Down there is hard to see, but that's a black OG berry that was transplanted yesterday. And we have a hollyhock, some thyme, and Greek oregano. And then next to that is winter savory. It's making flowers now. It, I guess it's in the thyme family because winter savory flowers look exactly like thyme flowers, but a lot larger. So there are some thyme flowers. And if you want to see what they look like, let me zoom in for, for you in a, in a second. Where's that zoom? There we go, some time flowers. Okay, we got the zoom right, but the autofocus is not working today. 
we have a Cleveland sage that's here and and down there is a milkweed plant that's happening that's a showy milkweed and we have more Thai cob kang and more dragon fruit and then over here we have that's gladiolus the flowers are done now we're going to deadhead them soon this is a Taraco blood orange and it's making blood oranges for us now in the back is a Nepal or a padded cactus that my brother grew from seed and then over there is another Thai cob kang you guys told me that zinnia can grow in clay so we have a couple of zinnia plants that are growing straight in clay and they're starting to make flowers now so we're, it'll be nice to get some flowers in the resort garden in the main bed here we have the golden band of corn and down below we have some California number five cow IPs and we have more time here this is another um, milkweed plant we have some daylily this is the edible kind the daily has been really hybridized and there's a lot of cool flowers and um, cool colors of flowers but people aren't entirely sure that they're edible so the surest way is to get the wild variety the one that a lot of them have been hybridized from so we have those here now and these are new we have a couple of golden beets and from conversations with you in comments and other videos you suggested the golden beet and we have some that are growing and um, growing for you so we'll uh, harvest one and um, look at how they lo look like on the inside this is a oro blanco grapefruit we have a grapefruit now this is a very small and young tree it will produce fruit but if we're interested in it growing it the tree growing then we should harvest the fruit but I'm not that patient, so we left one to uh, hopefully produce into a grapefruit for us. I recently, with haste, grafted the sister variety of the Oro Blanco onto, the, onto this tree. And this is the budwood of the mellow gold grapefruit. Hopefully, it will be successful and we'll have a multi-graft tree on here. But I'm not too optimistic because I did it very hastily. And also, I use budwood that's been sitting in the fridge for a while. This is budwood that we received back in March. So hopefully, it's still good. We have a volunteer pumpkin. This is probably from last year's jack-o'-lantern that we put here to compost and break down. We have a pumpkin that's developing over there. And then over here are a couple of togarashi plants. Togarashi is Japanese for chili, and they make these really interesting long and slender peppers they're good for snacking they're very crunchy um, I'm not sure how what the ratio of uh, non-spicy to spicy is I'm not entirely sure if they if they are spicy or not but uh, maybe we'll find out one day when we crunch on one of them and it turns out to be spicy this is a red kiri squash and then along here we have more of the edible daylily that's growing here. And then we have a bunch of garlic chive. Garlic chive makes a lot of seeds, so we've been letting them grow here and pulling the greens and throwing it down and letting it break down into soil for us. And before we end this tour, we can look at a couple of tea plants that are growing here. These are tea plants. Scientific name is Camilla sinensis and they were acquired from a nursery that's local. What's important about that is because teas have been difficult to grow because we get very dry weather and the natural environment of tea in China is in humid conditions. Um, the nursery here has been developing a couple of strains and they, I think they've been working on it the last 30 years. And these are the two that they've found, two strains that they've found have done well in our climate. And it looks to be so because um, when we got the plant, it wasn't as filled out. So um, 
the other good sign is that we are seeing very little leaf burn. So if you, with the other plants that I've gotten in the past from other nurseries, where they probably got it from a different in growing environment, we got a lot of leaf burn, which is this browning of the tips. And we're seeing um, very few on these two strains. So um, very happy about these tea plants. And um, that's what's growing in the resort garden at the moment. We'll go and harvest our beet and see how it looks like on the inside. We'll pick the smaller one, the, the larger one, we'll just let grow and grow and grow and see how long it can get for us. It's got this really nice bright orange color. Pretty cool. Let's give a slice into our golden beet and see how it looks like on the inside. Wow, look at that color. Amazing. Nice and bright. Okay, so in the previous episode, we harvested our, our ox heart carrots, and I wanted to show you what it looks like. The first thing is that to get the carrots this size, we let them grow a little bit longer than usual. And what that does is um, you're gonna end up with a carrot that's a little bit more ma mature. So it's, it's got this really interesting cross section. We'll, we'll slice it in half and look at it. So here's our ox heart carrot. You have the middle part that's by definition woody. It's still edible. Um, you can eat it raw, and I did. Then you have this portion of the carrot that's around the woody portion. This is still very carroty, and it's got um, a little bit of sweetness, and it's a little bit more soft. So uh, with its size, it's still very edible. They're great for stewing because this part has less flavor. If you stew it or you use it in a recipe that uses a lot of seasoning, it absorbs in. You still get the carrot texture and all the carrot benefits. So that's our uh, ox heart carrot. Let's take a cross section from this angle and you can see the ring around the woody portion of this carrot. And um, yeah, that's gonna be our episode today. We looked at how our resort garden's doing and um, we'll look at other plants in upcoming videos like watermelons and perhaps giant pumpkins. Or maybe we'll see it at the end of this video. Um, so with that, we're going to sign off. And until the next video, thank you for watching and happy gardening. Here's some area with a lot of growing potential that we're still getting around to. And we have some giant pumpkins growing, or a giant pumpkin growing. Over there is a Big Mac's pumpkin. And then down here, recently transplanted, is a Atlantic Giant pumpkin. And we have some wheat that's growing. This is Utrich wheat. It's supposed to be a ornamental wheat that is going to be blue in color. It's once it dries, it's, the blue is starting to come in. So, pretty neat. You guys love shard. How do you feel about golden beet? Same family, so, should be tasty. <laughs>